Thank you. Um, and I was just going to say actually what, it's, uh, what a pleasure it is to be here. And it's always as the Canadian ambassador, when I see a sea of red or I'm asked to wear red, which is on our flag in one of our national colors, it's always a delight. So thank you very much for the invitation. So it's a combined pleasure, but it's a big pleasure for us, Your Excellency. And I, you know that you tell me, call me Ayesha, but you are really <laughs> Excellency and excellent women. So let's stay there. So Canadian. Yes. Diplomat, working in the different diplomatic positions around the world, many areas in Asia, in India. But you are not only diplomat, you are also mom, mm -hmm. you are also wife, and especially for us, important, you are a big supporter of women. And you are doing a lot. As I mentioned, I had the pleasure to be part of the Inspire and Impact group. The, the female leaders in Czech Republic. And this is the group who is established uh, thanks to your leadership and your support. So tell us a little more about this topic. We will speak today about different things. Lenka started with the change as a key topic of uh, today's conference. So how do you take a change? <laughs> how do you manage changes? So I think the, the, the topic of, of change, yes. Um, I think, you know, we're all actually, we've all become experts in change um, over the last couple of years with, with COVID, with um, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We have been constantly thrown with the most unexpected, unpredictable, sometimes quite horrific uh, changes to our lives. So we've all become experts. Um, I think that the topic specifically when we're talking about women and change, um, I think there are, there are many key lessons. And so I was thinking about this on, on the way in, uh, into the event today. So this idea that yes, COVID has, has made us all experts in change. We've been forced to adapt in all kinds of new ways. Um, I was thinking actually also about the lessons from my life in terms of change. So I often get asked a bit about my background. Um, my parents uh, immigrated to Canada from India in 1970 and, and they left India for the freedom to marry. They had never been to Canada. Their stories of their first winter in Canada, um, they still talk about it. Uh, it was not easy. Um, that they were really you know, they, they took a risk. They embraced change in a way, and they, they made the most of it. Um, it was hard. They had experiences that were difficult to get their lives started, you know, experiences of racism in those early days. But within a generation, their daughter's a Canadian ambassador. So again, this idea that embracing change, not knowing what it might bring to our lives, but, but actually something quite extraordinary can happen. And then I was thinking sort of in practical terms as well. Um, I was saying to my colleague, it's my son's birthday this morning. We had kind of a dramatic oh, start to the day. I woke up early, like many <laughs> of you, you might be parents in the room. I, I made him a special breakfast, which I burnt actually. So the fire <laughs> alarm went off. So it was kind of a dramatic morning. <laughs> but we, don't remember. <laughs> well, we try, right? We sang happy birthday. It was, um, it was a good start to the day. Uh, but in terms of my personal life, you know, my daughter is, is going to be leaving home this summer. She's going to university. Lots of changes as the children grow up and as life changes, lots of changes at work. As, as with the post-pandemic environment, um, people are making changes in their lives, moving on to different careers, the impact of hybrid work. So these very practical as, uh, as managers, as leaders, as parents, the things that we are, are grappling with. So this topic, I mean, I think there's a societal impact, there's an organizational impact, there's a personal impact. And I was trying to think of maybe, maybe some lessons that I could share, and I would say from that kind of um, jumble of, of observations that I was thinking about in the taxi, I guess I would say there's that idea of embracing change and being open to what it might bring to you. And then I would say there's also a key is as we take risks to embrace change that we take care. Because I think key to taking, taking advantage of those changes and taking those risks is taking care of ourselves and building our own resilience. Because I know that the like many in this room, whether it's a busy morning where you set off a fire alarm in the house, um, we're tired. So it's important to take care of ourselves too. 
Oh, thank you. That's such a powerful message, really. As you say, take a risk and also take care, and it will bring the opportunities and adventures sometimes. Yes, you never know. You never know. <laughs> We speak a lot in, 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 the le in the light of the equal pay as a topic which is big, and it's still valid here. We speak about the different elements mm -hmm. and the reason why there is still equal pay gap. We speak about the opportunities related to the diversity, <coughs> inclusion, all the sustainability topics which are on the agenda, and they are growing. So how to, how to put this forward, how to stop only speaking about yeah. this thing, what we can do more. And I know that there is a lot happening in Canada. You have a great diversity also in a government is the inspiration for many, many countries. So what you would share with us, what you advise yeah. or just to share experience, which could be helpful, what we could do more. So I, I mean, I, I come from a perspective where I, I believe equality is just the right thing to do, um, that it's the just thing to do, that when I think about myself, I think about my children, I want us all to have the equal opportunity to realize our full potential. But I also realize that some people, unfortunately, need convincing because to achieve equality, we do need to take action. So I, I serve um, the Canadian government, the Canadian people at a time when we have 50% of our ambassadors around the world are women. Um, that didn't just happen. It was a, a, a question of choice. It was a conscious decision to um, really ensure that women in our system were getting the experiences they needed to prepare themselves for senior leadership roles, um, and then also being given the opportunity to actually achieve those senior positions. So looking at the barriers that were in place and removing them. Um, so it's the right thing to do, but it is also the smart thing to do. And on that point, I think sometimes we do need to have the strong arguments in place, the data in place. So, you know, for Canada, for example, which is, um, you know, my government is is unapologetic about its commitment to equality. Um, it's uh, it's at the heart of our foreign policy. We have a feminist foreign policy, and I know that that can be a scary word, but at its heart, it's about equality. Um, we have a, a feminist international assistance policy, which means our development money is focused on equality, on women's empowerment, on um, sexual and reproductive rights, all of these things that make it possible to achieve potential. Um, because it's the smart thing to do. And what that means is when we look at the Canadian example, we know that, um, that the increased labor force participation of women accounts for a third of our economic growth over the past 40 years. The data is clear. We know that addressing the gender pay gap, and we have a pay gap in Canada, I think it's 89 cents, something like that, um, that, that by addressing that, in the next 10 years, we could add $150 billion to our economy. So the, the arguments are there, and, and we need them. We, we need them in our back pocket in order to convince those who maybe are thinking, oh, it's nice to do, but maybe we don't have to. Um, I would say the other piece, and maybe I'll, I'll just share a short story. So I, early on in my career, I was serving in India. You mentioned I've, I've served a lot of my career in, in Asia. I was a junior officer and doing some work in, um, in a difficult part of the country where there was a significant amount of conflict. Um, I went to meet with a local village council. I was the only woman in the room, so it was me and a group of men. We were talking about uh, their priorities for the community. The only other woman in the room at certain times was serving the tea. So that was striking to me, and it's still, I can picture it in my head. At the end of the meeting, I asked to go and speak to her, and I asked to go to the kitchen, and there were a group of women who were doing the cooking and making the tea and getting things ready, and I spoke to them for about 30 or 45 minutes just to, to find out what they thought, what, were, what, what was going on in their community, what were their priorities. There were differences in terms of the conversation, the tone of the conversation, but also the content. That information I worked into my report and my analysis uh, that I sent back to my headquarters. It was a lesson that I think about because it was a very clear demonstration that engaging groups that were being left out, being more inclusive, actually made me better at my job. So when we talk about, you know, there's a lot of uh, research out there about diversity in boardrooms, diversity around decision-making tables, that it leads to um, 
better problem solving, better decisions. I could see early on in my career that it made a difference to talk to not just the, the usual suspects or the, 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 the leaders who had the title, but to really try to make the effort to, to speak to other people who were maybe being left out of the room. So again, that idea that it takes action, that there are things we can do system-wide, um, but there are also things we can do in our everyday work that, that can actually make a difference. Oh, thank you. That, that's really very important to realize that there are a lot of facts which prove why the diversity really can bring a positive impact, positive change. So really focus on this, mm. on what are the real things, and speak with people, what are the barriers to understand how to improve it. But then the one thing you said, this is a conscious decision. Yes. That really, really, we know we want to do it, we want to improve diversity, which for sure in this room we are all aligned. So the question and your advice is how to speak with others to, to move this forward with these facts, with the reasons why, with the concrete small actions, and just to ask others to commit to do it together. So, um, I... It takes energy and effort, I think, to, to break down some of the silos. Sometimes we are confronted with the naysayers or the, the people who maybe just want to give us a little pat on the shoulder and say, they're there. Um, you've had your say and now let's just move on and continue to do things as we've always done them. I, I come back to how we find the motivation to do what we do. So we talked about the facts which help us make the case. I often um, get asked, you know, how to prepare, and I, and I do my homework, so facts matter. But I also think that the personal motivation piece is important. Mm -hmm. So thinking about why this matters to each of us as individuals, thinking about the why we do what we do, can help give the energy to engage. And so I, I was asked, you know, um, recently uh, in, uh, well, not that recently, I guess it was last year, Co with COVID, my sense of time sometimes <laughs> escapes me. It was last year already. Um, about, uh, I was asked the question, sort of, what's your superpower? And, and I often say that actually, I think our stories are our superpower because in our stories and reflecting on, on where we've come from and what motivates us, uh, we find the energy to continue. I was saying to Lenka um, as I was coming in that um, in my case, I think, I think it's in my DNA to be passionate about these things. And I think about, you know, my grandmother who in 1940s India married the person against her family's will, um, stayed in India after India's independence when her family left and went back to England decided to start organizing for India's independence. She organized peace meetings for Mahatma Gandhi. So, you know, these sort of fierce personalities, and I think we all have these role models in our lives, we have to look for them, and then we have to share them. We have to share those stories, because I think in those stories we get inspiration. So, the actions themselves, I mean, I think that there'll be lots of time to be talking about the kinds of HR actions, the way you address sort of systemic barriers and discrimination, um, how we as individuals can, uh, can progress in our professional development and achieve in our careers. But I think as individuals, there's a little bit of work that we do um, in reflecting ourselves as to, as to what it is that drives us. And that, I think, that grounds you when you either enter a room like this where it's full of great energy and like-minded people, or you enter a room where you really do have to make the case for why equality matters. Wow. That's amazing. I think we can feel the energy from that. You mentioned the thing, why we do what we do. This goes with the, with the purpose we have, mm -hmm. we were thinking about, that something what helps us in the difficult times, that you have that compass, you know the direction, you know how to decide, exactly. you know what to say yes, what to say no, it's really helping. And that goes with my, with my last question. So, as a diplomat, as a mom, as wife, <laughs> as a supporter of empowerment of women, how can you do all this together? How do you manage this and how you still are able to take care of yourself? So I would say sometimes it's actually quite selfish. My team knows that when I get asked to, to either speak about women's leadership or to sit with a small group and share experiences or to you know, if I get asked to be a mentor, 
selfishly I say yes because I get a lot back, actually. So I get a lot of energy um, by being with people who are committed to making things better. And that may mean making things better within your family, within your community, within your business, for your country. I, I am, I think I was uh, lucky to be raised with a sense of curiosity. So I, I enjoy hearing other people's stories. I'm in, um, in a line of work in which change is built in and in which curiosity is an asset. So again, I've been fortunate in that my life has come together in such a way that all of that has come together. That being said, after burning my son's breakfast this morning, I am looking forward to the weekend. It was a clear sign that it's been a busy week and it was time for a break. So I guess that's the other piece that goes back to those pieces of advice that, you know, taking, taking care of yourself is as important and whatever that, that looks like because we can't burn ourselves out. Um, particularly when we're wearing all of these many, many hats um, in work, at home, in life. Uh, so, so the taking care piece, I, I, um, I'm sure many of us in this room have read the book Lean In, and I think there's so many strong lessons in there, but I do think leaning back is also important. Yeah. As you said, so who didn't have the opportunity to read Lenin, definitely we recommend <laughs> because there are many, many advices. So I wish you to really enjoy your weekend. Thank you. It was <laughs> and have a birthday party with your Thank son you. without burning anything. Yes, <laughs> I do have to make a cake, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> enjoy your journey to Thank make you. things better. Uh, enjoy the curiosity and thank you very much not only for coming today to join us but also for everything what you do in Czech society to support women and empowerment and diversity. Thank, thank you, you and thank you to all of you. I think it's it's really you're taking the time to be part of this community. Um, it's inspiring. So I hope that you get a lot out of out of today's discussions and out of connecting with each other. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. That was wonderful. Thank thank you, you so much. very much.